the thing that you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings and accepts them with pleasure from your hands, and you ask why. It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Has not the one God made you? Do you not belong to him in body and spirit? And what does the one God speak? Or seek godly offspring. And so be on your guard. Do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to the one that he's supposed to protect, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. The one who is unfaithful to his wife does violence to the one that he is supposed to protect. It hurts. Sin always does. God did not give up on us when we sinned. When we turned our back and when we rebelled against Him. In fact, He did, in spite of everything, everything that was necessary to bring us back to Him. That's why we celebrate communion every week, to remember that. We take the bread and we remember Jesus' body was broken. The cup, we remember that His blood was poured out. And we remember that when He died on that cross that day, He took the death that you and I deserve for our sin. If God was willing to go to those kind of lengths to reconcile, to restore our relationship with God, what kind of lengths ought we go to to restore our relationship with our spouse? To start building it on the foundation of Christ and start learning to love. As you take communion and you remember what God did to forgive you, maybe you have someone you need to forgive. Perhaps you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe you need to lay down your pride and go humbly to your spouse and ask for a fresh start. Perhaps for the first time you can start putting God at the center of your relationships. Maybe you're not married yet, at least not by standing up front with a pretty dress and making a commitment. But now you're convicted that the way that you've been living has been part married and part not. And you know there needs to be a change. Use this time to turn back to God and to start rebuilding your relationship with your significant other that is built on God's picture for our lives and not something that the world has sold you. Use this time of communion to get the picture in your mind and to turn to it and to turn to God. Let's take communion now. Cause I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken I'm accepted You were condemned I'm alive and well Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted.
I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. I know that um, you're, <laughs> you're ready to, to get out of here today. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm still going to challenge you with one last piece to help you to complete this picture. I said earlier that, the, that, that sex will, will fade away. And I wasn't just referring to when we get old and our bodies change. I was also referring to the fact that it will not go with us to heaven. You see, we said a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about money, you can't take it with you, right? Well, this, that part of our relationship won't go with us either. But love will. The relationship of love that we build with one another, that transfers to the next life. Think about it for a second. The reason that sex was needed in the first place was because we die and the human race needed to continue. There, there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no suffering, and no death. Jesus said, The people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection of the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, nor and they can no longer die. They are like the angels. They are God's children. And since they are children of the resurrection, but in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. When we leave this life 
and we go into the next, we will experience different kinds of joys. We will experience the life much more like the, the original Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve where we can eat freely from the tree of life, enjoy a perfect love relationship with God, and perfect love, love relationships with others. Because the ones who are there are the ones who hear, chose, and learned to love. That's who we will spend eternity with. It'll be just like that Garden of Eden picture where we can take delight in the Lord and we can take delight in one another. Let's go from here and be people of love.